inheritance actually means two objects have a is a relationship, but too often this concept is misused for the purpose of cheap code reuse. In this video, I show you how you can fix this misuse by refactoring the code towards an alternative design with just a few simple steps. The following scenario I have already observed quite often. Some existing code is needed in a different context. It could almost be reused as is, just a few changes are needed. Now, either a derived class for the new context is created and a variation point is introduced in the existing class, which now becomes a base class, or the commonality of both scenarios gets factored out into a base class and two derived classes for the two specific contexts are created. In such a scenario, inheritance appears to be a natural, easy to realize and cheap solution, but this actually is a trap. Because such a design creates tight coupling not only between the base class and its derived classes, but also between all the derived classes through the base class. Such a design also causes classes with multiple responsibilities. The derived classes contain code to configure the behavior of the base class via overridden methods and also usually contain additional own code, which violates the single responsibility principle. Such base classes tend to lose their encapsulation more and more over time. As more derived classes for other scenarios get added or existing derived classes change, more protected and protected virtual members will be added to the base class. Finally, this results in much more complexity than actually necessary if a different design would have been chosen. The worst case I personally have seen was a base class created for code reuse in a bigger project. After a few years of development, this class was 1945 lines long, it had 35 protected virtual methods and 19 protected fields. And in the end, there were 13 derived classes. Okay, so if inheritance is the wrong choice for code reuse, what is the alternative? The simple answer is aggregation. There are many design patterns which describe code reuse via aggregation. One would be the decorator pattern. If we want to use the existing code as is in the new scenario, and we just need to add some additional code before or after the reused code gets called, we could create an interface for the code to be reused and create a decorator which contains the additional code and calls the reused code as needed. An alternative would be the facade pattern. If we only want to reuse some parts of the existing code in the new context, we would refactor the existing code into multiple classes and create a facade for the existing scenario using all those classes and we would create another facade for the new scenario, which only uses the classes we want to reuse. My favorite design pattern when it comes to converting misused inheritance into aggregation is the strategy pattern. This fits well if we want to keep the existing class as is and just configure its behavior slightly differently in different scenarios. For that, we would introduce an interface through which the different behaviors would be injected into the reused class. Even so, technically this pattern can always be applied to convert inheritance into aggregation, we need to be careful. Overusing this pattern can lead to quite complex code. Now let me show you how inheritance can be converted into strategy pattern step by step so that you can apply these steps when you find inheritance misused in your project. First we create a new interface for the strategy. I usually also add the postfix strategy. Then we add a new constructor which accepts the strategy and a member to store the strategy. Now we use the strategy in the variation point without breaking the derived classes. In this case, the member is abstract, so we use the null object pattern as a default behavior. If the variation point itself, the member, would have contained some default implementation, we would have moved this code into a default strategy. In the second step, we convert the variation point, the virtual member, into a private method. Now the compiler helps us to find all the derived classes and we convert each override into its own strategy. In this step, we still provide the different strategy implementations through the derived classes to keep the code using the derived classes untouched. Now we remove the implicitly configured default strategy to enforce that the strategy is always provided explicitly by the using code, which makes this code more expressive. 
In the last step, we finally remove the inheritance. We now apply one of the following solutions to the derived classes. If there is no further code, like in this example, we can simply delete the derived classes. If there is further code which requires APIs of the former base class, then the former base class becomes a dependency to the former derived class and gets injected through its constructor. If there is further code which is completely independent of the former base class, then we keep the former derived class simply as independent class. In this step, we obviously also need to adapt the code using the former derived classes accordingly. And that's it! So next time you find some code misusing inheritance, you have a blueprint to refactor this code into a better design, step by step with minimal effort and minimal risk of breaking existing code.